Howdy Commanders, Echo here. Today we're going to take a really quick look at settings for World of Warships Legends, give you some tips on where I think you should have your settings set to, as well as a couple little additional tips and bonus tidbits that are sort of related to your settings, but aren't actually found here in the menu. So we're going to start here on the controller settings. I do suggest that you go with controller preset 3 or 4. I like 3. Uh, there's not a huge difference on 3 versus 4, but uh, I do prefer 3 just because I like uh, torpedoes on square and ammo switch on triangle. The main reason to go with 3 or 4 uh, is to have gun lock on your left stick. And uh, obviously you Xbox players out there, you're going to have to you know, map the buttons accordingly. But for the most part, this looks basically the same. <clears throat> Specifically for the gun lock component of it, where you click in your left analog stick to lock the guns. And just look back across any of my other videos uh, as to how I use that. I use it multiple times every single game. It allows you to, you know, hey, I know my next engagement, or at least I'm anticipating... My next engagement is going to be on the port side. Guns are currently on the starboard side. What you do is you flip the camera around with the right stick to where you want the guns to be pointed. You click the left stick in, and then the turrets will start rotating to where you locked that gun orientation. And then this allows you to move your camera around independently of those turrets traversing. You can look at friendlies health, enemy health, Hey, is that actually a smoke screen over there? Etc. You can go to the tactical map and your guns will rotate while you're in the TAC map, etc. So the gun lock feature gives you a whole host of things you can do while the guns are turning. It's sort of a, a preemptive way to use and set up your guns. It's, it's not reactive, but it's proactive type of approach. And the more you can be proactive in this game, the better off you're going to be. You're not just constantly reacting to what the enemy's doing around you. You're trying to dictate the engagement by being proactive. Especially if you play a lot of battleships, heavy cruisers with slow turret traverse, and even the slow turret traversing destroyers like the Japanese, Soviets, even the Germans to some extent. Gunlock becomes even more imperative in those type of ships. Your X and Y axis sensitivity is totally a player dependent thing and how you like sensitivity, so I'm not going to chime in there. Uh, X and Y axis inversion, this isn't a flight simulator, so I don't know why you would do this. I know some people do, but I wouldn't suggest it. If you find that you do like it inverted, that's fine, but I'd, I don't know why you would. Collision prevention, I do suggest you turn this off or put it on disabled. Uh, when you have it enabled, the game will try to push you away from islands when you're on your way into them. And sometimes you do want to be getting bellied up right next to an island or even intentionally tactically beach to stop you from hitting a torpedo, from stop you from coming around a corner or exiting a smoke screen, etc. So I would suggest strongly to turn off or disable collision prevention and controller vibration the this game is built around a whole host of tactile uh, inputs to your controller to help you know when you've been hit and so on and so forth as well as a whole host of other sensory inputs not just visual and we'll talk about that more in a little bit but one of the ways this game communicates to you is through controller vibration so i do suggest that you turn that on next we'll go to the sound settings this is a little bit of uh, user preference, but I do suggest that you have the volume higher rather than lower. Uh, this mostly can be handled through general volume, and there's a couple other sliders for other specific types of volume, but I would suggest that you have the volume up a little more than down. And the main reason for this is that the game communicates to you, again, in multiple ways than just visual. A lot of this game's information is conveyed to you through the music, through the audio cues, like your reload cycle coming up and your, uh, your cooldowns coming off for your consumables, your voiceover you know, announcer guy, torpedoes to port, 
type of thing. A lot of this game's information is conveyed to you through auditory inputs. So by having the volume relatively high, it can help you with picking up on those audio cues. Port music volume, not necessarily as important because that's just when you're hanging out here in the menus and back at port. So that's not quite as critical, but the battle music and voiceovers and to a slightly lesser extent voice chat, if you don't run comms terribly often, then this isn't, isn't quite as critical, but the battle music and voiceovers, this is, these are the two sliders that are giving you your information uh, through that voiceover and the musical cues. So I would suggest these be relatively close to max level. Now, if you are using voice comms, which I do suggest that you use, then I would also suggest having voice chat up relatively far. Now, tying into your vo volume and sound settings, I would also suggest that you play with headphones. Playing just off of speakers, I don't think is good enough. Unless you have like a really, really nice surround sound system and there's not a whole lot of other noise and volume distractions in the area that you're playing. But a lot of the audio cues aren't just audio cues, but they're directional audio cues. You know, it's nice to hear, like when a ship blows up and it's a friendly, it might be off screen to your starboard side. Well, if you're wearing nice headphones or earbuds, that sound will come in through the right side. You know, the, the torpedo uh, beeping alert, that'll be directionally focused if it's behind you or to the right or left of you and so on and so forth. So not only is it audio cues, but it's directional audio cues. So this, I would encourage you to play this game with headphones for that reason. And also have a mic on those headphones. A cheap pair of in-ear buds with an inline mic, which is what I use, is like 10 to 15 US dollars and can be ordered offline or at a local big box electronics store. Very easy to use, plugs right into your controller, doesn't have any additional battery requirements, just runs off the power from the controller. So I'd suggest that tying into this whole volume discussion that you run headphones and have a mic. Lastly, under this section is your voiceover mod. Play on common. Just just play on common. Unless you have like high school level conversational mastery of, what is it now? Seven nations, two of them share language, so six different languages. Then I guess you could run with national voiceover, but so much of this game's information is conveyed to you through that voiceover. You know, your your teammates using the comms wheel, the announcer telling you when there's torpedoes nearby or when a destroyer has been spotted. Well, I'm sorry, but if Takagi is barking at me that a destroyer is off my starboard side in Japanese, I don't speak Japanese, so I'm not going to know that. Sure, eventually, once you've played the game enough, you're going to understand, like, what the voiceovers are telling you. But even then, like, in the heat of battle, when you're aimed down the sights in the middle of a gunfight, you might miss something if it's in a language that you don't speak. So I would just suggest switching this to common and leaving it on common. Fight the temptation to go to national. I know there's the whole, like, but my immersion crowd. Well... I hate to break it to you guys, but this is an arcade game. I'd love to see an Atlanta cruiser shoot on cooldown for 15 straight minutes and still have any ammo left, much less barrels on its main battery. So a simulator and immersive experience, this is not. It's an arcade game. The voiceovers are an integral part of having success in this game. In order for them to work for you, I would suggest running Common on the voiceover mod setting. Moving on to the display settings, there's not a whole lot to talk about here except increasing your HUD size. I definitely encourage everybody to go to enabled on increased HUD size. This makes your, primarily what this mainly does is makes your mini map in the upper left corner quite a bit bigger. It's like 20% if memory serves from the patch notes, might be something, something in that range. It's, it's noticeably larger. And especially if you play on a slightly smaller screen or television, 
then this can go a long way to making the islands a little more visible, making the ships a little more visible on that mini-map. So definitely hit enabled on the increased HUD size. Um, for those of you that need it, uh, colorblind mode is available, which is a great thing. Uh, they have multiple types as well as uh, intensity of those settings. So that's really nice. Um, and honestly, you know, I would encourage you just maybe in AI games or something, maybe even set some of these. If you're finding like you're having trouble like differentiating some of the lines on the mini map or whatever, um, you might not be diagnosed with colorblindness, but just perhaps due to the exact um, shades that are used on the game and on your television might just create a bit of a contrast clash. Uh, and these colorblind modes, I've noticed on other games, uh, though I'm not colorblind myself, some colorblind settings in other games have made those games uh, easier to play or a more enjoyable experience when they're turned on. So if you find that maybe, you know, the maybe the blue ring, for example, is uh, of your detection ring is just like blending in too much into the background, uh, maybe just try playing around with some of these colorblind settings. You know, you could also fix that through the settings on your TV or whatever, but it might be easy to just change them in this game setting so that you don't constantly have to change it on your TV when you want to play a different game or whatever. So just a thought, uh, even if you aren't colorblind, that option might help you out. Next, we've got customization. I would just go enabled on all of these. This is really just for like skins and unique voiceovers. If you don't have some of these commanders, it really doesn't affect your voiceover component at all if you're not running an azure lane commander warhammer commander soon to be transformer commander it doesn't really affect your voiceovers at all it's just the skins i personally think that some of the skins from azure lane and and warhammer and halloween are are pretty interesting to look at you know again as i was getting at under the sound and voiceover <laughs> discussion uh this is an arcade game it's not historically accurate anyway so you know having a, a unique skin doesn't bother me in the slightest personally i think some of them actually look cooler than some of the more quote-unquote historic camos anyway um it's an arcade game guys don't get too bent out of shape about a unique skin uh one thing as mostly a note for wargaming unfortunately when you have azure lane enabled if you have an azure lane commander on your ship this also forces you to have the Azure Lane voiceover. I would love to see a separate setting where it's Azure Lane camos and Azure Lane voiceovers because as we talked about in sound, even if you have voiceover set to common, this Azure Lane setting overrides that. And I don't speak Japanese, so I have no idea what those ladies are saying to me. And I'm missing out on some of the audio cues. I've learned most of them, but, I mean, that's a huge handicap. And if you don't play with Azure Lane Commanders as often as I do, then it can be a huge handicap to those players who jump into the game with one of them just infrequently. So it would be nice, Wargaming, to see this separated into a different, you know, Azure Lane camos, Azure Lane voiceovers uh, type of selection so that we could change those independently of one another. Under network here, uh, you've got your cross network gameplay enabled or disenabled. I would encourage you to enable this, um, especially now that we've got cross platform voice chat, uh, at least in the game. You can't pair with people in a division or do like cross network friends yet, but Within a given game, you can do cross-platform voice chat. So I would encourage you to do enabled on this. This is going to put you in a pool with everybody else that's on your system as well as everybody else that's on the other system that's also running enabled. It just puts you into a larger pool. It tends to make your matchmaking and wait time in the queue or the lobby a little bit shorter. So... This is definitely a good way to go. And especially in the near future when we get cross-platform, like, friending, divisioning. Not sure how exactly that's going to work, but thanks to Wargaming, we're actually going to eventually get that. And Sony and Microsoft are going to work together to make that happen. So, 
Thanks, Wargaming, for that. So especially once those functionalities come to the game, uh, having this disabled is just going to put you at a huge disadvantage. So putting it as an enabled right now is a great idea, and it's only going to become a better idea in the future. Uh, lastly, on account, uh, if you have like a 40% win rate, uh, go ahead and click this right here. Um, you know, my back hurts, so uh, it'd be nice to drop off the potatoes occasionally. So just go ahead and click on that if you've got that 40% or less win rate. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Don't delete your Wargaming account. That's a terrible idea. Um, yeah, so this has been a quick overview of the settings functionalities. I know it was a bit of a brief one, everybody, but a little bit busy today, so this is what we did. Thanks an awful lot for listening, everybody. I greatly appreciate it. And as always... Stay salty, Commanders.